For this video, we are going to create the easiest of the fur brushes. We're going to be using this flat marker image from the source library. So first thing I want to do is clear out layer one. And we're going to go up here in the brush library. And we're going to click on this plus sign. And we're going to call this hair and fur. Because we might end up putting hair in here someday. And now we are going to click on the plus sign here at the top. We're going to leave most of these default to start out with. Let's go to Shape. And then we're going to click on Edit. And then we'll choose the Import, which is right here. And then we want to choose Source Library. And as you can see right here, the third from the top on the left hand side says flat marker. And then we'll select outside of that menu to close it and then we'll click on done. Now the problem with using this particular brush is orientation. Let's click on done. And you can see it just kind of only hits on one side. We want this part of the brush. And if you will remember, the center of your image is the leading edge and then everything follows behind it no matter which direction it goes. So you want the fur to actually go in an up and down position for this to work. Let's go back into the brush and we're going to click this edit up here again. And then we're going to use two fingers on the image and rotate it 90 degrees. This will only rotate in 90 degree increments. There are some that I would love to be able to do a 45 degree, but it doesn't. Once you have it at 90 degrees, click on done. And now it's going the direction that we want it to. And then we go here to rotation. And we want to move that all the way up to follow stroke. And then we're going to go all the way down here to Apple Pencil. And we're going to change this opacity by turning it off completely. Slide it all the way to the left until it says none. And then we will go to Properties, and we want to turn off the Orient to Screen, otherwise it will not follow your stroke like we set up in Shape. So we turn that off. Maximum size for this brush, we're going to set to 400. And we're going to click on Done. And there's our untitled brush. Let's do a little test out. We'll scrunch this up like this. And as you can see, you get nice fur if you go around in a circle to the right. If you go around in a circle to the left, you also get nice fur, but it's shorter. 
This makes this brush really good if you happen to want to use both types. Let's go in here and we're going to call this fur brush because it is the most basic of our fur brushes. We'll create that reset point. And we'll click on done. And let's choose a brown color. And usually when creating an animal character, I like to use what's known as a dumpling shape. A dumpling shape is basically a circle that has the sides scrunched in and the bottom flattened. So we're going to bring this around. I'm going to the left for the short fur. And there we have a head. If we go darker and create a layer underneath, We can build this up until we've created ears. Let's go to a color in between those two, and I'm going to reduce the size of my brush. Let's go around to the right. And there we go, we've got ears. So there's our first basic brush. Now what we're going to do is duplicate this. We're going to slide to the left and say duplicate. And this makes fur brush one. And the first thing we want to do is change spacing. Notice that the more spacing we have, the further apart the stamp is. And the more the brush just kind of looks a little stampish. So we want to choose something that puts them together in a smooth fashion. Let's try 30. And see, that's nice. It still goes in a stamp. but it actually looks a little fuzzier than the first brush. And so this is fur brush one. And we're going to create a reset point. We're going to duplicate fur brush again. That creates fur brush two. And this was set to 30. And this time we're going to go to the color dynamics. Let's add a little difference in saturation, in lightness, and darkness. Uh, I've got the saturation here set for 8%, the lightness for 11 and the darkness for 11. If you tap on these numbers, you can manually type in what you want. And we're going to click on done here. And now we have a brush 
that gives a little texture to what we're drawing. And just like that, we have created three fur brushes from the felt tip marker image in the library. Play around with the settings and see what it is that you like. We've got the dynamics, which will change the size by speed. If you use an Apple press pencil, you might want to try setting the pressure sensitivity, which allows you to increase the size of your fur and decrease the size of your fur as you go. You can change the opacity, whatever. Change the preview size in order to get a different picture here. If I change that to 50, then you can see it a little bit better. And there we go. Just like I said, play around with the different settings and see what it is you like. And right now, I'm going to try to use Fur Brush 2 here and make a cute picture. I hope you enjoy the music.
Okay, so I have created a cute little bunny rabbit here uh, using my new fur brush. And of course, while I was doing that picture, I remembered a fourth brush that we can make. If we go up here into our brushes and duplicate fur brush again, that creates fur brush three. Let's go in here. And what we're going to do is go into Color Dynamics, and we're going to set the secondary color. This is how we make a two-tone brush. I'm going to click right here where it says None, and we're going to set that to 30%. And I'm going to create a new reset point and click Done. And now, when we go into our colors, we can select our secondary color. Let's use this nice medium brown. And for the primary color, let's use a darker brown. And now, when we use this brush, we can create a nice big body for our rabbit. Let's set this one to screen. And you'll notice as we're going it has even more texture because we have two colors going on this brush. And there you go. You can have nice color variations for your brushes this way. If we go up here and we set our secondary color to purple, then we will see purple. pushing in through here. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed both the tutorial and the demonstration. And you all have a wonderful day.